Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about strategies to get your army painted. Sometimes getting that full army is the toughest hurdle we have to overcome and today I'm going to give you the tips, the tactics that'll get you from gray to painted army. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique in learned Vinci V style. I think there's a lot of people in this hobby who play for years and yet never really get themselves to that fully painted army. And that's rough. Now, as with any video like this, there's only so much advice I can give and everything I say may work for you or may not. So I want to say that right off the top. That we're all individuals, we're all beautiful individual snowflakes, and what works for me may not work for you. But I've worked with a lot of people for a long time on painting, and I hope some of these tips might be useful to you. So, let's see what we can do. Tip number one. It sounds a bit trite and it's become so in the modern world, but don't be afraid to quit and get rid of things that don't, well let's just say it, spark joy. Now, it might sound strange that my first piece of advice when it comes to getting something painted is to stop painting and sell stuff, but that is what I'm saying. If you're the type of person who's been in the hobby for a while and you have a ton of half-finished projects or things that you look at and go, well, I might return to that one day, or, oh, there's a chance I'll finish that, or, oh, I'll just put those to the side and, you know, maybe I'll have a chance to get to them if the stars align and I suddenly don't have a job anymore and I win the lottery and also my kids suddenly spontaneously become adults in some kind of big situation, then I'll have the time to paint that army. Uh, stop fooling yourself. Stop lying to yourself and stop letting all of those unpainted figs hang over your head like the Sword of Damocles. If you're not going to return to the project and you don't actively play the army, that is to say you're not playing it as gray, if it's just literally sitting there on the shelf, get rid of it. Sell it. Give it to a friend. Whatever. Find somebody in your club who can rehome it. There's lots of different ways you can go. But get it off of your plate. Because when we have too many of those undone projects, they, be, they put a weight of opportunity cost on us every time we sit down at the desk. You sit down at the desk and instead of just getting to the project you're working on, you think, well, should I work on this or should I work on this? Oh, there's that old thing I didn't do. Hmm. And you go through all of that and guess what? You've burnt 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you haven't painted a darn thing. And then when you do paint something, you feel guilty about all the things you're not painting. Get rid of that stuff. Again, only if you're not using it. If it is something, if you're playing with your friends and you and your friends have, you know, play with the gray stuff and you don't care, then cool, keep it and keep using it and having fun with it. But if it's any in any way a weight, if it's any in any way a bag of bricks you're carrying around, then you need to let go of that bag of bricks. And that means getting rid of those figs. Tip number two. I'm going to call this the ordered work plan. Now, in my normal daily life, I often have to set up project plans and I do a lot of project management. It's sort of what I do for a living. Which means when it comes to painting, I take the same strategy. I am fully aware that this is something that will not work for everyone. But let me see if I can make it a little simpler for you. When you're sitting down to paint an army, think about the units you want to paint, the things you need to do to get to 2,000 points, or whatever your goal happens to be, and divide those up into sort of uh, unfun things and fun things, for lack of a better term. And make sure you have to paint one to two quote-unquote unfun things for every one fun thing you paint. Let's make that more real. If you're painting the average sort of army, that means you have some mix of troops, guys you have to do in mass to some way or another. It could be a lot of infantry or some cavalry or something like that. And then you probably have some mix of heroes and centerpieces or artillery things or singular type of items, right? Where it's more just one piece. Now, for me personally, I find the heroes and the centerpieces a lot of fun. 
it's one thing, you get to experiment, you get to make them special, and you feel really good when you're done. Because sometimes those individual heroes or characters, they might be 10-20% of your total army for painting that one fig. Oh, what a win! Right? But when you're doing the mass troops, you know, I've painted a Skaven army, I have like 13,000 points of Skaven, it really does kind of suck when you just finish one little clan rat and it's, you know, less than 1% of your total force effectively. That's, that can be a bit painful. As such, I demarcate those into unfun and fun. But your line might be different. You might really enjoy certain troops and not others. Maybe it's because of the way they look, how they appeal to you aesthetically, whatever. But effectively, have your, you know, have your vegetables before you have your dessert. That's the simplest way I can describe this, right? And so sit down, take a unit. Don't try to do the whole block. If you got to do 20, 30, 60 dudes, I don't know, some forces have a lot of, a lot of infantry. Uh, don't try to do all of those. Do five or ten. Get that done. Then retreat yourself. Paint a single hero, right? Then go back, do five or ten more. Then do, you know, some small artillery piece or something. Whatever you, that the sense is that breaks it up in your world, right? And by alternating that back and forth, you can find that it becomes a lot more fun and you suddenly get the to that full army without really constantly feeling the pain. The worst thing you can do is do all the centerpieces and the fun things first, and then all you have stretching out before you for miles and miles is the long tail of the unfun things, and nothing will make you make you quit, quit painting an army faster. All right, tip number three. Tip number three is a different workflow to what I just mentioned. If that kind of project management isn't for you, then maybe the sorbet method is for you. So the sorbet method is a little different. It's sort of a twist on what I just said. Some people really like working on different things, and they really value having a differentiation of experience. So the idea of sitting down and painting only one army for an extended period of time is pretty much anathema to them. That's okay. You can still get to a painted army. The key to doing that is to always have that sorbet on hand. What I mean by that let's, let, is, is the following. You start with a unit or something out of your army that you're painting. Could be some infantry, could be a hero, could be anything. Again, don't paint the centerpieces first or don't paint the most fun things. Still save those for the end. But something else. And then instead of going and painting a second unit of that army, do something else. Find alternative projects that are very small, that are very self-contained, and do those in between each unit. So for example, let's say you're working in 40k. When you do your unit of Space Marines or something, don't keep going in your Space Marine army. Instead, stop, paint up a kill team, or do a piece of terrain, or paint a single hero for, you know, a display model or something if you're into that. Whatever, right? But find a small, self-contained alternative project. And, and terrain and that kind of thing really does work well for this. Uh, and just insert those in. Those are your palette cleansers. They're fun. They're different. You can get sloppy. You can get messy. You don't have to worry about staying in the same color palette. You can change your paints. You can get crazy. And that's fun. Okay? So that's the sorbet method. Alternate between and again. Not only will you then eventually get to the army, but you won't get bored doing so, and you'll incidentally find you have a couple tables of painted terrain or multiple kill teams ready to go. It's great. And by doing so, you're kind of tricking your brain uh, into having a good time by constantly providing a novel experience. All right, final tip, tip number four. Tip number four is the multi-work stream. Some people just work better when they have multiple projects. They don't like to sit down and take one project completely from beginning to end in a single workflow. And that's okay. Instead, your desk should have two and no more than two, only two, two is the key, projects on it. Those don't have to both be from the same army or the same force. And in fact, I would often recommend they're not. This is sort of a variation of the previous method. 
But in this case, instead of trying to do one thing to completion and then doing the other project, instead, maybe you've got a big piece of terrain on your desk, and then you've got the unit you're working on. When you sit down to paint, your choices are limited to those two things. That's it. Nothing else counts. No backlog, no nothing. It is those two things, and you will choose between them. If while you're painting the unit, if you sit down and you start working on the unit for, for the army, and you get kind of bored and you're like, you know what, I don't feel like this. Cool. Stop. Set it to the side. Work on the other thing. Switch over to the other item. No big deal. All right. The point is, let yourself work on the project that, that actually ignites your fire, that gets your passion going at that moment. All right. And by having those two projects, once you finish one of them, you replace it with a new second project. Maybe it's another unit from that army if you did. Maybe you put that piece of terrain away or onto your table and you get a new one out or you get out a kill team to the side. Or maybe the second project is a box. Just a box. A box of miniatures. And your other project is build. So if you sit down, you look at those two things, and you're like, don't feel like painting today. Instead, I'm going to assemble, scoot the painting stuff to the side, and instead build. And then once you have them built, maybe that becomes the other project you alternate between. All right. So every time you sit down, you're not considering the vast universe of what you could paint and the opportunity cost of not selecting those things. You're limiting yourself to two projects, but you're working on the one that at that moment really gets your engine going. Okay. So there you go. There's my four tips for getting an army painted. I hope those really help. I hope that you can give those a try and they bring you, you know, closer to getting that fully painted army on the table. As always, if you liked this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. If you've got questions, uh, drop those into the comments below. I always answer every question asked. Don't forget, if you want to take your next step on your hobby journey, uh, we have a Patreon focused on review and feedback, uh, and you can find that down below. It also gets you access to an awesome Discord community full of enthusiastic hobbyists. I thank you so much for watching this one, and as always, we'll see you next time.